So this is going to be a, an interesting time for you if you think it's over. So I'm going to share uh, from my experiences, from the dreams that the Lord has given me, uh, where I'm at concerning Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Um, these are some things uh, that I know could be offensive. Um, you'll just have to sort of put it in the pipe and smoke it and uh, just see how it sits with you. Obviously, the media does not have any power uh, to anoint uh, next presidents. Um, that's only going to be up to uh, here in the coming months, probably going to the Supreme Court. So um, I just want you to ask, I, I, I just want to ask you uh, just to open up your heart. If you totally disagree with me, that's okay. We could still be friends. Uh, if you're with me, uh, that's all right, too, and we can be friends. Uh, let's pray. Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for your word. Lord, thank you for the dreams and visions you've given the prophets all over the world. And Lord, I just pray that you would release a times and seasons anointing in this place. Lord, that you would open up our eyes and our ears to what your spirit is saying in this hour. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have in your Bibles, would you turn to Isaiah chapter 45? Isaiah chapter 45. Now, I'm, I'm not going to assume anything uh, this morning about um, what you know or you don't know surrounding uh, the presidency of Donald Trump. There was a prophecy that was given around 2008 by a prophet named Kim Clement. And he described uh, a man uh, that would arise in America like Cyrus. And so just briefly to give you a background on Cyrus, Cyrus was the leader of the Persians. And they overthrew the Babylonian Empire that had overthrown uh, the Jews in Jerusalem. And so the Babylonians came and then uh, the Persians came. And there was a prophecy that Isaiah had given where he calls out the Persians by name and mentions Cyrus. And so here in Isaiah 45, Isaiah is prophesying hundreds of years before this actually happens, okay? So Isaiah 45, thus says the Lord to Cyrus, his anointed, whom I have taken by the right hand to subdue nations before him and to loose the loins of kings, to open doors before him so that gates will not be shut. I will go before you and make you the rough places smooth, and I will shatter the doors of bronze and cut through their iron bars." And I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden wealth of secret places in order that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who calls you by your name. For the sake of Jacob, my servant, and Israel, my chosen one, I have called you by your name. I have given you a title of honor, though you have not known me. Though you have not known me. It's interesting that it opens up and says, Thus says the Lord to Cyrus, his anointed. Thus says the Lord to his anointed. But did you hear what it just said? He does not know me. Can the Lord anoint people in the earth for his purposes that do not know him. Okay, I'm challenging your theology because we're just, when we think about who God wants to anoint, we're just looking for someone that's the next Billy Graham. God raised up Cyrus. So Isaiah prophesies Cyrus is coming. He has a purpose. He has a plan. He doesn't know God, but he's been anointed. So this is hundreds of years before it happens. Now fast forward. When the Persians destroy the Babylonian over uh, uh, the kingdom, he's going to destroy them as well, the Jews. 
And what, they, what happens is this. They bring out the prophecy that we just read to Cyrus. And he's so impressed. I'm just giving you biblical history. He's so impressed that a prophecy was made about him 100 years in advance that he decides not to destroy Jerusalem and allow the Jews to rebuild the temple. It was a prophecy that was made hundreds of years in advance by Isaiah that when Cyrus comes on the scene, a guy who doesn't know the Lord, but Isaiah says God has anointed him, it was that prophecy. So around 2008, a prophet, Kim Clement, makes a prophecy that there would be a Cyrus that would arise in America that wouldn't know the Lord, but that he would be anointed by the Lord, that he would be used to expose corruption, and that he would be a two-term president. A Cyrus. And so in 2015, I'm pastoring down in Lakeland, Florida. And I'm not aware of this prophecy made by Kim Clement in 2008 until later after my experience. But in 2015, I was actually in our sanctuary and I was there praying because there was a couple in our church that were going through a bitter divorce and it was breaking my heart because there were children involved and I'm flat on my face and as many of you know during that summer season of 2015 there was the Republican uh, nominees that were there's about 15 of them at the time that were trying to get the nomination to run against Hillary Clinton. And so I'm there in the sanctuary in 2015, down on my face. I'm unaware of anything that Kim Clement had said. And this is what the Lord says to me now. Put it down. I'm on my face. I hear the Lord begin to say to me, and Trump shall become my Cyrus. I didn't have a notepad. I didn't have anything. I actually wrote this down on a piece of paper that I found in the sanctuary. And I'm going to read you what I wrote in 2015 that I heard from the Lord. Trump shall become my trumpet to the American people. For he possesses qualities that are even hard to find in my people these days. Trump does not fear man nor will he allow deception to go unnoticed. I'm going to use him to expose darkness and perversion in America like never before. But you must know that he will be like a bull in a china shop. Many will want to throw him away because he will disturb their sense of peace and tranquility. But you must listen through the bantering to discover the truth that I will speak to him. I will use the wealth that I have given him to expose and launch investigations searching for the truth. Just as I raised up Cyrus to fulfill my purposes and plans, so I have raised up Trump to fulfill my purposes and plans in 2016. So I take this piece of paper and I think to myself, now we planted a church out of our living room, okay? Back then we had about 40 people. I was like a loser on the scale of church planter. No one knew me. I was just this kind of this faithful guy. And I get this word and I'm a nobody and I'm saying to myself, man, this sounds important. So I contacted a famous person I knew and said, hey, I think that this needs to get out to people so that they might recognize, hey, you might not like this guy's tweets, you might not like his personality, but just like Cyrus who didn't know the Lord and God anointed him, I actually believe God revealed to me that he anointed this guy and he's actually going to win the 2016 election. That was probably one of the worst emails or worst ideas I ever had. Because when they published that on the media, we got so many death threats, hate mails, 
false prophet. I mean, because again, back then, he was one of 15 running. So I'm openly declaring way in advance, this guy is going to win the 2016 election, and he's actually a Cyrus. And so a lot of people then hear Lance Wall now around this time gets the same word. This guy is actually a Cyrus. So obviously in November, he wins the election, and we've had him as president these last almost four years. One of the most stunning things that has happened, in my opinion, to confirm what I'm telling you is that when Donald Trump moved the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem, which was extraordinary. Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister, of course, he doesn't read our prophecies, right? You know, they think we're kooks. They come out and they hand Donald Trump a golden coin with the face of Cyrus on it. The Jewish people... In Israel, hand Donald Trump as he does this action. And again, they're recognizing, even not even knowing Jesus Christ as Messiah, they're recognizing Donald Trump was the 45th president of the United States. And we literally just read Isaiah 45 on Cyrus. There's a direct correlation between the two. And so... They present him as Cyrus to the nation. And so here's a couple of things that I want to mention to you. Is this okay? Just giving you some prophetic perspective of my journey of what's happening. So right before he's elected there in November, as he's on the campaign trail, he has a meeting, and I'm talking about the, the first time he won, in Orlando, this is documented, in Orlando he has a meeting with church leaders and they say to him, Donald, you're like kind of offensive the way that you talk, you've been married a couple of times, I mean you're not really who we, you're, you're not the, the model citizen for a president of the United States. And he looks at this group of church leaders, and I'm going to quote to you what he said. He says to them, you have lost your voice, and you have been stripped of your power. Vote for me, and I'll get you both back. I just quoted it to you. Donald Trump confronts a bunch of church leaders who thinks he's too loud, and in essence, he's asking them, where's your voice? Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Silence in the face of evil is evil itself. And God will not hold you guiltless. Not to speak is to speak. Not to act is to act. Pastors who stay out of the fight agree with evil. Could God have raised up Donald Trump as a trumpet? Could he have raised him up in a package that most of the American church was never going to accept? What, what, what was, the, was his past? Was the, the way that he operates, was it always intentional? Was it always a test to see if we could truly discern if we've been delivered from a religious spirit or not? Because the problem is if you have a problem with Donald Trump, you're going to have a problem with almost every Bible character in the Word of God. If you met them, there would be things about them that you would reject unless you recognize that God has anointed them for a specific person. Now the question is, when Donald Trump said that, you've been stripped, you've been stripped of your power, you've lost your voice, was he pandering for votes? 
Because people during election cycles would say, yeah, they're, they're just pandering. They're, they're bantering with, you know, certain sex, uh, S-E-C-T-S, sex of people so that, you know, they can get their vote. And they're really, what, what was he pandering votes? Well, well, let's see. When he wins the presidency on May 4th, 2017, at a national day of prayer event, This is what he says on record to the church. We will not allow people of faith to be targeted, bullied, or silenced anymore. We are giving our churches their voice back. So he wins re-election in 2016... In 2017, in the prayer garden at the White House, this is what he says. We will not allow people of faith to be targeted, bullied, or silenced anymore. We are giving our churches their voice back. Then if you move forward, I'm just, for the sake of time, I'm just moving through some of my notes here on January 19th. 2018, President Trump and Vice President Pence became the first team, presidential team in history to address the March for Life rally in history. This is Donald J. Trump is the first president in the history of of the United States that showed up in Washington, D.C. at a rally for life. Sixty million babies have been murdered on U.S. soil and not one president had a heart to join the church in their efforts to stand for life. This is what he said there. I quote, Faith breathes life and hope into our world. We must diligently guard, preserve, and cherish this unalienable right. Now let's speed up to the last few months. On September 26, 2020, President Trump nominated Amy Coney Barrett, an extremely intelligent woman with pro-life values to the Supreme Court to replace Ruth Bader Ginsburg, a staunch advocate for pro-choice. So this is a president that has become a champion for religious liberty. This has been a president that has been a champion for pro-life. And if you're going to say, well, from the womb to the tomb, what about life outside of the womb? He has also given more money and more legislation for crime bills regarding African Americans. I do not believe he's racist. I have been in close proximity to him on multiple occasions. We dialogue with people that are in the White House, and I'm telling you, There is a narrative surrounding this man that I believe is demonic. I believe it's a false narrative that has come to deceive people. So this man has been pro-Israel. He moved uh, the the embassy to uh, Israel. There are many things that he has done where if it comes down to it, we have to ask ourselves the question concerning voting. Am I going to vote for a political party? Am I going to vote for a skin color? Or am I going to vote biblical values? Let's just, what I encourage people to do is to blot out presidential candidates' names blot out political parties and just go down and check boxes concerning what you really believe. Now, here's the problem when we say vote biblical values. How many of you know in America, most people don't follow the Bible anymore? So when you try to tell people, well, listen, just 
take, take out the, the candidates, take out the parties and just vote for, for biblical values. Here, here's a recent study done this year. 58% of Christians surveyed do not believe that the Bible is adequate to define morality and truth. 58% of Christians in this nation do not believe that the Word of God is capable for morality and truth. So all of a sudden we have a much larger issue in America. And I'm going to sidestep for a minute, but here's the problem. Political figures can never solve spiritual matters. What if we not only have a problem in discerning who should be our next president, but even more so the greatest issue in America is with the American church? What if actually what happens in society is a reflection of what's happening in the church? Quiet in here. So we have all these words. We have all these prophecies about Trump being a Cyrus. And then we go into this year and we have Joe Biden that wins the nomination to run for the Democratic ticket. And he picks Kamala Harris as his running mate who has a 100% record that throughout her entire political career she has always voted and 100 days, he says, of office, he will enact the Equality Act. The Equality Act has been passed as a bill through the House, but it's not been passed as law by the Senate. And when the Equality Act, if it gets through, here's what will happen. If, how many of you have children? How many of you have young children? Under the Equality Act, under a Biden presidency, if your eight-year-old girl wants to become a boy, there's nothing you can do about it. They want to have surgery. They want to become a transgender. Your rights as a parent are going to be stripped away. Just look it up online. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm not trying to intimidate you. I'm just trying to tell you of a totally anti-biblical, demonic agenda that's been published in America. Are you a business owner and a Christian? Are you a principal at a Christian school under the Equality Act? You can no longer use your religious views for why you cannot hire a homosexual or a lesbian. If a homosexual, a lesbian, a transgender wants to come to your workplace, they want to teach at a Christian school, you can no longer say, well, we're Christian here, I can't hire you. Any pastors and leaders here? Under the Equality Act, if a transgender, a homosexual, or a lesbian wants to come and get married at your church, you can no longer turn them away due to your religious beliefs. Anybody ever heard? You guys are looking at me like, huh? Like this is real. I'm not making this up. And within the first 100 days of his office, this is what's going to happen. So let's... This is not this morning. I know I'm landing the plane. I'm not, I'm not trying to pit one against the other. What I'm trying to get to this morning is, is this guiding your life or not? Are you a disciple of Jesus Christ or not? Are you a fan who follows your feelings? Or are you a follower who will submit to the word of God? Do you serve a God of your imagination? <clears throat> what the culture tells you, 
or do you serve the God of the Bible? So the Pew Research Center in their studies after the recent election past week surveyed Christians. Who did you vote for? 54% voted for Trump. 46% voted for Biden. So we have not only a racial divide in America, but we have a divide in the church. We literally have a 50-50 split in America concerning whether you want to follow the God of the Bible or whether you want to follow the God of your imagination. How many of you know Lance Wall now? Lance wrote a book that was published in October. And I'm going to read you what he wrote. He says, The election looks increasingly like it will not be decided on November 3rd, as some rogue states are counting mail-in ballots as long as they are postmarked by midnight on election night. This means it could be a Trump landslide on election day, and then surprise, surprise, Ballots begin to arrive postmarked November 3rd with timestamps of 9, 10, and even 11:59. We could see within days that landslide turns into a margin and then potentially a Trump defeat. That scenario doesn't even include the normal illegal ballots, ballot harvesting, and voting irregularities. The key indicator is going to be when major networks like Fox News, the AP, and Facebook begin to declare a winner on election night or soon after. If that doesn't happen, the election results will be contested and the debate could last not just weeks but months. This uncertainty will unleash civil unrest in our streets. It may be that the Supreme Court will end up appointing Trump as president during a period of unparalleled national chaos. This Trump victory won't stop the insanity. It will only serve to escalate the distress all the more. So we have obviously seen on television now that President-elect Joe Biden has now declared himself the winner by the media. <clears throat> As someone who is in touch with all the prophets in America who have prophesied that Donald Trump would win a second term, they're not giving an inch. They're not willing to budge. They're not willing to repent. All of us are unanimous believing the word that God spoke to us that Trump indeed would win a re-election. And that what's happening right now is the false prophets of the media are literally cutting themselves. They're dancing in the street and they're shouting. Meanwhile, there are much larger issues on our hands than just a presidency. I've told people this, listen, if he doesn't end up getting reelected, I will openly repent to the body of Christ. I don't believe just because you miss a prophecy makes you a false prophet. You definitely missed it. But in 1 Corinthians 14, it says, let two or three prophets speak and let the others judge. If prophecy in the New Testament was 100% accurate all the time, then why would we need to judge prophecy? I'm not making excuses for inaccurate prophecy but here's my thing. Listen to the blindness and hypocrisy going on right now. People who voted for a totally anti-Christ agenda, anti-life, pro-LGBTQ, anti-Israel, matters that have issue with eternity are going after prophets who could have missed it that only affects the present. You see the blindness and the hypocrisy that's happening in the body? 
regardless of whether Trump or Biden wins, what I'm simply going to leave you with today is that we are in a dire situation in America where the church of Jesus Christ has failed to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is not about an orange man, and this is not about some guy in a basement. If you get me in a corner, I really, to me, it's, it's never been about Trump. It's never been about his per- It's just simply, I believe God spoke to me. I've anointed this guy. I'm going to use him. I have, I have withstood people trying to make fun of Sleepy Joe, whatever. To me, that's been inappropriate. It's never been about their personalities. It's been about their policies. It's, it's never been about it's what does the Bible say? How can I get in alignment with that? But I'm just telling you, we're in deep trouble in America. January 1, the third actually of this year, I went on Sid Roth at Supernatural. And he asked me who would win the 2020 election. And I told him a story, and the story was this. I had a dream in 2019. I asked the Lord who would win the 2020 election. And in the dream, Donald Trump was running the Boston Marathon. And there were crowds that were all around him. They were spitting on him. They were laughing at him. They were mocking him. And he fell down about 100 yards from the finish line, and he could not get up. I believe we're in that period of time right now in America. And supernaturally, two older women pushed their way through the crowd and helped him get up and helped him get to the finish line. Now, these are some ladies up on the screen who read this dream. They flew to Boston, and they literally took the appeal to heaven flag through the Boston Marathon finish line. How many of you know prophecy takes partnership, right? You have to partner with the word of the Lord. I mean, you can blame the prophets for missing it, of course, But what about where was the participation in the body of Christ? Of course, you not only have, you know, people that don't want to vote because they don't see Jesus Christ on the ticket, but you have people don't vote because they just don't like Trump. But these individuals and in the dream and what I shared this year, the Lord said to me, these older women, they represent prayer and intercession that it's going to take prayer and intercession to help Donald Trump get to the finish line. But the Lord spoke to me about the baby boomers. He said to me that the future of America is in the hands of an older generation in America who knows what's at stake. And What I want to leave you with today, probably over the next weeks and months, I personally don't believe we're really going to know who's president for quite some time. I want to encourage you to fast. I want to encourage you to pray. I want to encourage you to seek the Lord about how you can partner with His will. I also want to call on a generation of older folks in the church who maybe someone my age might consider old school. I can't tell you how desperately young people need you right now. I've never met a generation that needed correction more than my generation. Because the gospel is not based on my feelings. The gospel is based on truth. And the issue with young people these days is when they hear the gospel, no, you can't be sleeping with your girlfriend and think you're going to heaven. That's straight Bible. But because that offends and doesn't make them feel good, they reject the truth. The gospel is deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow Jesus. Jesus is an assault and pepper shaker that adds flavor to your life because He is the life. 
He is the way and he is the truth. Jesus isn't an item on a buffet that you can just pick out when you want and then have a little of the world. But there's compromise and there's a lukewarmness in the church regardless of who's the next president. The church is responsible to preach the gospel and make disciples. There's a civil war that's going to come to this nation and there's a civil war that's knocking on the doors of the church. So like Elijah, I want to draw a line in the sand today and just ask you, how long will you waver between two opinions? How long will you waver between an American gospel and a gospel of deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow the Lord? I want to read one last dream. April 16th of this year, 2020. I had a prophetic dream where I found myself walking into a hospice. I was unaware of why I was there, but proceeded into a large bedroom. Upon entering, I immediately noticed a large sign above the bed that read 1 Kings 1, 1 through 2. It says, Now King David was old, advanced in age. And they covered him with clothes, but he could not keep warm. So his servants said to him, Let them seek a young virgin for my lord the king, and let her attend the king and become his nurse, and let her lie in your bosom that my lord the king may keep warm. Perplexed as to why this verse was in this bedroom, I looked down on the bed and there was Joe Biden, Shivering and frail. He was very cold. Now I published this April 16th online. You can find it there. I asked God, what is the meaning of this dream? And he responded me in the dream, the man before you is not a threat, but it will be those who are overseeing and managing him while he is frail that will be a challenge. For he is a mere puppet a decoy of sorts to distract many from what is really taking place behind the scenes. Keep your eyes on the woman who they will place beside Joe, for she will seek to reinvigorate and seduce many. Before there was even Kamala. I believe that God has clearly been revealing his desire, and his intentions in America. Now, whether we as the people of God choose to partner with that, we'll have to work it out. I recognize that there are critical issues of your experience, what you've been through, what you've been a part of, I've often told people that I am not a Trump worshiper. I have been just as much in trouble in the Donald Trump camp because I refuse to condone his sin. I don't believe that he's some superstar saint, but I did believe that God anointed him, and I do believe that he best represents biblical values. But I'm also not here to demonize people. I'm also not here to try to get you to vote one way or the other because obviously we already voted. What I want to say to you just days after the election is let's consider our ways. Let's get in the place of prayer and ask the Lord, am I a disciple of Jesus Christ? Am I living my life on biblical principles? Have I bought into a culture of feelings that will lead me astray? Or have I made my life on the rock-solid foundation of Jesus Christ? Will you bow your heads with me? Father, we want to thank you for this opportunity this morning. To hear what your word has to say. To hear some dreams and visions concerning where we're at as a nation. God, I want to pray your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, I want to say that political figures will never heal spiritual matters. 
God, there are deep underlying spiritual issues in our nation that the only answer for them is the people of God. God, I pray that your Holy Spirit conviction would come upon us. Lord, I pray that you would grip our hearts for the shedding of innocent blood. God, I pray that you'd grip our hearts concerning racism. Lord, I ask that you would grip our hearts concerning the decaying of religious liberties in America. God, I ask that you would sound the alarm in families and parents in the education system. Your word says in Lamentations, Israel did not consider her destiny. Therefore, her collapse was great. God, let us consider our destiny. Let us consider the destiny of America. And may our collapse not be great. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all.